Hello everyone, welcome back to the studio. You can see I have a very special guest. Hi everyone, I'm Lulu, founder and CEO of Elix. We are the first brand and community to help you tune in to the wisdom of your body and discover how traditional Chinese medicine can help you not only experience a better period, hormone health, but also just feel your best every day of the month with diet, lifestyle, and herbs. She says it so eloquently, but living it out <laughs> is so difficult, right? Well, we live in a modern, stressful world. Like yeah. every day, there's so much sensory stimulus coming at us from all different directions. Yeah, exactly. And we're like constantly being told how to be, mm -hmm. what we should be doing, what we shouldn't be doing. But we really want to talk about and explore more about how to be more in tune with ourselves and be in harmony with it. Mm -hmm. So if you guys didn't know, we had a full episode, episode one, where we talked talked about the why behind our cramping and our breakouts and our skin conditions and just everything that goes on leading up to our period. So in this episode, we really wanted to dive deeper into the food and nutrition because it has everything to do with how we manage our stress, how we yes. feel and how we can take back the power really yes. into living like our best lives. And you know, so much of Chinese medicine is this idea of supporting your mind, body and spirit. So Felicia, as you were saying earlier, you know, so much of it is first about noticing our own stress response. What does stress feel like in our body? And then it's like, what does our body actually need through movement and nourishment? And then our spirit, what are the things in our life that bring us joy and happiness? And how do we cultivate more of it? Because if we can focus on all these things holistically, then obviously there's no period pain, but then we also feel so good every day. Yes. Yeah, so some of the Things we're gonna cover today is how to curb our cravings mm. because you know leading up all I feel like is cheese carbs sugar yes. and it's like why does that happen is that normal so we're gonna start off by talking about the main triggers of food and just lifestyle things that we could be taking and eating that make our periods much worse and make our skin break out and be inflamed <music> Something that I hear a lot of, especially with acne, is inflammation yes. or inflammatory foods or inflammatory yes. diets. So how does that play into everything? Yes, inflammation is the number one culprit of skin issues, hormonal imbalance, feelings of agitation. And there's like a cyclical relationship between inflammation and stress. Because on the one hand, stress can be caused by inflammation. On the other hand, when we're stressed, we naturally want to reach for that bar of chocolate, the bag of chips, the slice of pizza, and those are all the most inflammatory Comfort food. food. Comfort foods, yes. And so, you know, could we give ourselves comfort foods, foods that are comforting and nourishing without the inflammation. An easy trick, one of our medical advisors always says to stick to when you're going grocery shopping, the outside perimeter of the grocery store. Oh. Because if you think of it, it's the middle aisles of the grocery store. <laughs> if you need a shortcut, the middle aisles are where a lot of the inflammatory foods sit. Oh. So think about things that are processed, things that have a lot of additional chemicals, preservatives, things with tons of sugar, salt, all of those tend to live in those middle aisles. But then out around the corners of the grocery store, that's where we have our fresh fruits, our vegetables, our lean protein, seafood, mm. chicken, uh, more of those like fresh things. So the more that we can get those fresh foods into our body, and Chinese medicine is all about living in tune with the natural seasons of the world. So looking at what foods are in season for that time of year actually gives your body naturally what it needs. So we're in fall entering winter right now. We see a lot of root vegetables. Mm. So sweet potatoes, yams, pumpkins, a lot of mushrooms. And those foods prepared the right way can be really delicious, grounding and nourishing. You know, like a nice like um, butternut squash soup mm. or a nice like mushroom risotto but make it with ancient grains <laughs> yeah i know this is a huge thing because for ro her 
inflammation or when she's out of balance will come out as a nosebleed. So it's oh, like very... That's a lot of heat. Yeah. When there's a lot of bleeding, um, that's usually a signal of internal heat. Oh, yeah. And it will be from like her just eating an extra chicken wing or something like Fried that. Fried foods. Fried foods. <laughs> heat. Fried foods are very heating. I would say if you have like sharp, intense pain or a ton of heavy bleeding and clotting, that could point to internal heat. And so you definitely want to avoid sugar, alcohol and also fried foods. It could trigger a lot of um, inflammation on the oh. inside and because in Chinese medicine, depending on the whole cluster of symptoms, some of these symptoms could point to internal heat, which is associated mm. with um, the heavy bleeding and the sharp pain versus like if you have like, let's say less sharp, but maybe like dull, achy pain that could point to like a um, deficiency instead. Mm, I don't know if this is normal too. On the first day, I feel so much ache. It's like only that first day, it's like my legs are aching, that whole area is aching. And is that inflammation or is that something else? It could be, mm. um, it definitely could be. And do you find that you feel better if you, um, let's say, take a bath or apply some heat? Yeah, so that's that warming. Yeah, that warming. And a lot of what the herbs do is almost like have give your body that warming effect, but from the inside. Mm. So that's why a lot of our community members, after they've made some of these diet and lifestyle changes and also been using the herbs in three to six months, they'll notice like, oh my gosh, my menstrual blood went from like a maroon, dark brown color mm. to brighter red, yeah. because that's showing that there's better blood circulation or that their tongue is like less yellow because mm. the yellow signals heat. And maybe they went from like, that sharp stabbing pain to like, there's still like some movement. There's, they can feel a bit more tired, but yeah. it's not as debilitating. Can we talk about the blood for just a second? Yeah. So is a healthy cycle like more of that brighter cherry fresh blood yes. versus the browner duck? Because mine's like quite dark all the way through. Yeah, so definitely it's kind of like if you accidentally like cut your skin or your finger and you notice the blood that's coming out of your vessels is like that bright cherry red. That's what we actually want our menstrual mm. blood to look like. I have to think <laughs> about my life. <laughs> and people with like more pale, like pink color blood, that could point to deficiency. And that could also be associated with um, irregular cycles and periods. But then on the other hand, if the blood is like darker color that could point to like either heat or blood or cheese stagnation. Um, and so that's why we typically see like if people have that stagnation, their blood goes from that darker color and maybe like clotting, like mm -hmm. heavy clots to like bright red. And it's normal to have a little bit of clotting, but what we're concerned about is when you have clots the size of a golf ball and they're coming like very regularly, I would say that is time to definitely like seek help and medical mm. attention. Mm. And I love actually reading the comments from your community <laughs> because it's from people who I'm sure some of us watching have no idea how food works, no idea how it's even related to our period because we just like weren't taught these things, right? Like growing up. And then it was through just blindly taking what seems like a little droplet in our water. And then they see all these changes, myself included, you know, like irregular periods getting more and more regular. And that's something that I really like learned that, wow. So when you see it happening yeah. and then you want to know more about the foods. Yeah, like these yeah. Foods. Definitely. Definitely. Um, our hope for Elix is when people discover it, they just change this one simple thing, like just add the herbs into their luteal phase the week before their period, and then they could start to feel better and notice an improvement in their body. Then hopefully that gives them the motivation to discover food, discover movement, discover other wisdom from Chinese herbal medicine, because I know it can feel so overwhelming to get started in being healthier, yes. clearing up hormones hormonal acne or clearing up period pain or even getting your period back. Like exactly. so many of our community members are using the herbs to get their period back after they went off of birth control. Mm -hmm. 
um, which is my own personal journey and going off birth control, discovering post birth control syndrome, and then finding my way back to Chinese herbal medicine to help mm. balance from within. Yes, it's like when we realize and see the success within ourselves, it's like, okay, it opens this whole new world. Right, now we're motivated to yes. continue forward Yay. one step at a time. Some of the things that come to mind when it's like the week before my period and I'm craving things, I'm like, why am I suddenly wanting so much bread? Mm. Um, I stay up in the middle of the night and just cut cheese and eat it in the kitchen. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I love cheese and I'm like, oh my God, this is going to be really bad for my skin, but like, whatever, I just need it. And sugar, it's like yeah. all of a sudden, I don't add sugar into my coffee or drinks normally, but that week before I'm just like, I need it because it tastes really bitter all of a sudden. Mm. So like, what is actually going on when we have these cravings and is that normal and can we curb them? So for a lot of the cravings, you know, it could point to a deficiency or a need that our body has for nourishment. And I would say, you know, it's really important to notice that craving and then see, is there a healthier alternative or substitute that you could give yourself? So, you know, if we're wanting something sweet and creamy especially at night, could we make ourselves like an herbal latte mm. instead? Like add in some soy milk, froth it up, like put in some herbs that are warming, things that could help our bodies wind down and go to sleep. And then that could actually support you in getting better rest and having better rest then we might not crave things as much. So it really is this cycle, right? So mm -hmm. in the first episode, we touched on caffeine yes. because most people rely on it as their first beverage of choice yes. or caffeine in general, like matcha or tea. We are supposed to be the most energetic in the yes. morning, but I'm like, why am I the most sluggish? It's almost mm. as though sometimes I feel what is normal or what is healthy, I'm flipped around. Mm. So how can we all kind of like rebalance that? Yeah, well, we can rebalance through diet, lifestyle and movement. And so I love that question about like, why am I so tired in the morning and what can I do about it? So much of Chinese medicine is about living in tune with our natural world. So how can we rely on our natural world to support our bodies? And so when you wake up first thing in the morning, try to get some sunshine. And studies actually prove that getting sun first thing in the morning helps with our circadian rhythm and that natural body clock. It serves a purpose to not only wake us up, give us more energy, but it can also help us fall asleep at night because it's alerting our bodies that this is the morning so then when the sun goes down we can be more sensitive and wind down and get better sleep and then you know let's think about can we get some movement first thing in the morning you know even if you're not like a big exercise person you know could you go for a walk do some stretching just like get that blood flow and circulation going because sometimes that sluggishness could be due to lack of circulation mm -hmm. and maybe we have chi and blood in our body that's stuck and it just needs your help getting moved around. It's true. Before I leave the house and get on the subway, by the time I get to the place of mm -hmm. destination, I feel more alive. And be very intentional about that morning beverage because that morning beverage could set the tone for the rest of the day. Like whether we're stressed and depleted and just like amped up the rest of the day or that our bodies are supported and nourished for the rest of the day. So I love starting every morning with a squeeze of lemon in warm water. Mm. And so you're getting that dose of antioxidant, vitamin C, which is not only great for your skin, but also great for your hormone health. And in Western medicine, that lemon water is helping to detox your system. Mm. So it can help actually bring about a bowel movement and you can clear some of that excess that's in your body. That's so funny. <laughs> because like I drink coffee for that balance <laughs> sometimes I'm like without it I can't so like this the lemon mm -hmm. I've been taking with the ginger yeah the ginger the ginger okay so that's like morning right in a morning, nutshell yeah. be very conscious of what, what you're drinking drink. yes and then also nourishment so we have a single egg here to demonstrate <laughs> a familiar friend amongst <laughs> the strangers <laughs> so this is actually one of the best things you can eat for hormone health clinical studies have actually proven that eating eggs leads to increased fertility in women um, and so it's one of the best forms of like clean protein so 
So I just think even if you're really rushed in the morning, just having two like lightly boiled eggs oh, no, I love that. can do wonders for giving yourselves that boost of energy in the morning. And if you do have more time, I really do think breakfast is the most important day of the meal, but it's not for cereal. It's really for protein, complex carbs, fiber. Lulu has an ancient greens <laughs> recipe. How did that come about? Yes, well, so I tried intermittent fasting for years, mm -hmm. and I realized that intermittent fasting was really developed for men and how they biohack on a 24-hour cycle, but for women, and it can wreak havoc on our hormone balance. Mm -hmm. So having caffeine or coffee without any food in our system can send our blood sugar levels like <laughs> in a steep, decline and it can throw off how we manage stress so we get really cranky and angry and irritable before lunch and, it, and I thought it was giving me more energy in the morning but instead it was sending me crashing mm. by lunchtime. So for people who aren't aware of like blood sugar and how it affects mm. like what are the symptoms other than is it just like that fatigue? You might notice like fatigue, um, brain fog, like you're just like a bit slower or you're like really irritable. You find things super annoying. You just don't have a lot of patience. And then it can bring about tension headaches. So it's like, you know, you just start feeling the sides of your head like caving in and pounding and all of that can be due to blood sugar. It's that hangry feeling. Oh my God, hangry is real in the <laughs> luteal phase, am I right? Oh my goodness. Hangry is real and one of of the best ways to support a hormone balance is actually to have a healthy breakfast. Uh, and so you mentioned ancient grains. I think that's the easiest hack um, for a healthy balanced breakfast. You can get a grains mix on Amazon or anywhere that just has things you probably normally wouldn't eat in a day. Mm -hmm. like barley, wheat berries, millet. These are grains that satisfy a sweet or carb craving because they might taste like rice or risotto, but they are actually full of protein and fiber. So they're really rich and nourishing on your body. Mm. And then when you make it, I like to add in a ton of like leafy greens. So depending on the day, like spinach, arugula, kale, maybe saute some mushrooms, put it in there and then First thing in the morning, I have everything I need for the day to support my body so I don't have to be as worried about what I'm eating the rest of the day. It's true, like when you set that foundation early on, you can concentrate, mm -hmm. you're less triggered by comments yeah. and people and like your own inner thoughts. Yeah. Okay, so then that's the morning, right? Is there something we should be doing or concentrating on at night? In Chinese medicine, there's like the yin, which is like the evening time, the like rest and relaxation. Then there's yang, which is the time of like energy and transformation and the young time is at its fullest at noon. So at noon when we have lunch, afterwards if we can go for a walk, if we could just move a little bit, get some digestion, that gives your body time to actually process whatever mm -hmm. you're gonna have. So if you're gonna have like a big heavy meal I, and treat yourself, I say do it for lunch. Mm -hmm. And then as the sun starts winding down in the afternoon, it's also the time to start slowing down. You know, like to start um, going easier on your body. And if you can, like, lighter dinners have actually been shown to help people sleep. Mm. Lighter, earlier dinners so that your body can properly wind down. It's like less processing for the body, less energy. Yes. Mm. Okay, so then moving on yes. to like sugar cravings. Yes. We sugar. all love to indulge, I think, but then that makes, you know, our acne worse, our mm -hmm. inflammation worse. So what are some things we can do when we feel that coming? Yes, so I would say when you notice the craving is coming, make sure that you have snacks on hand that you enjoy that fulfills that craving and that also is additive for the body. Mm. So my favorite things for sugar cravings are to switch to berries. Um, so we've got some blueberries here. Blueberries are one of the best foods you can actually eat for your period because it contains such high levels of antioxidants and anthocyanins. Mm. Anthocyanins are a type of antioxidant that comes from really dark colored foods mm. um, and this is is actually going to help with hormone balance, lowering inflammation, and just giving your body more nutrients. Mm -hmm. And then also sometimes sugar cravings from just like not having enough like warmth and nourishment. So we always encourage people to like eat more like warm and like cooked foods and make sure you're getting that like healthy leafy greens mm. um, because we can actually poop out excess hormones. Oh. 
Oh. Yeah, so if you're having those regular bowel movements, then that can help everything continue to flow well. Yes, I've heard from my mom and just other health professionals from Eastern approaches mm -hmm. that we shouldn't have raw salads or like smoothies. They yes. were like, smoothies are really bad for you leading up to your period because it's too much cold. cold. Yes. So like, what is behind that? Yeah, I mean, a lot of theories in Chinese medicine say that it's the cold in the uterus and the internal dampness that leads to like pain and fatigue and feelings of heaviness. And so in order to like move the blood and chi, you really want warming things. Mm -hmm. And warming could be from foods like cooked veggies, um, bone broth. And warming could also come from herbs. So like we talked about the ginger aid earlier and ginger, cinnamon, turmeric, these mm -hmm. are all really great warming herbs to help us warm from within. I mean, the other benefit of eating cooked vegetables versus salads is just the sheer quantity mm. of veggies that you get in. You know, it's like if you've ever cooked spinach, it's like a giant bowl <laughs> of spinach will cook down to like this wee little yeah. tiny bit. So then you think about if you're eating cooked vegetables, like how much more fiber and mm. like vitamins and minerals you're getting into your body and all of that helps your body, you know, like detox other things you don't need and move them out. <laughs> mm, okay. For people who are like, I'm not just gonna snack on berries, like that's like boring. How how else would you say you can incorporate it like yeah. into? So I would say like figure out what tastes you enjoy. Like I also really love just like slices of apples with peanut butter. Mm. Cause like one of my favorite things as a kid was like caramel apples, but caramel and like processed sugars are actually really bad mm. for our skin and our hormones. So then I think like, what's something that tastes similar to that, but is healthier, like mm. peanut butter or mm. almond butter and like peanuts have a warming energetic. So it's actually great to have peanuts and peanut butter, like when you're around the time of your luteal phase or your period. So then another question we get is dairy. Yes. So what is the deal with dairy and why does it cause not everyone, but a lot of people to break out? Oh, dairy, I love my sharp cheddar and my aged Gouda <laughs> so much. And it just wreaks havoc on my skin. I used to get the worst hormonal acne all along my jawline and no scrub or peel yeah. ever helped because it was my diet mm. and my lifestyle. So dairy is considered damp in Chinese herbal medicine and it's cold. And I also just think living in America where the standards and the things that are fed to our animals are not always pure and natural. Right. So you think about if like cow are being fed with synthetic things and injected with hormones um, so that they can fight off diseases and be more resilient and farmers can produce more. Like what does that do for our bodies mm. when we then eat those things in? Um, right. So that's, I think a lot of people say like, oh, why is it that I can go to Europe and have dairy and my skin's okay, yes. but here in the States when I have dairy, it's not okay. No, completely. I went to Greece and I ate cheese every day. Like it was their feta and I didn't break out once. And then I come back, snack on my cheese, boom. <laughs> it's like all over the face. So totally like the way that we cultivate the vegetables and like the environment they're in, I think plays a huge difference. So how do we, like, what are the alternatives? I think if you're are going to have cheese just wait until after your luteal phase and your period mm. <laughs> and then think about balancing that out with something else right so if cheese is like damp um, you know maybe you can use herbs that help clear that like damp heat and work with your body so we actually created daily harmony which is an everyday hormone balancing and stress supporting formula and it has great herbs in it like this American ginseng which um, America <laughs> Yep, this is American ginseng. <laughs> What's the difference between American, Korean, Chinese? Yeah, so Asian ginseng, most um, commonly known as Panax ginseng, has more of like a heating and invigorating process. Mm. Um, so it's great for like building stamina and energy, whereas American ginseng actually is more neutral and cool cooling in constitution. So it also helps with like stress and longevity and immune health and energy, but it works 
a little bit differently on the body. Oh, I love when we can tie the world of skincare because we love ginseng as an ingredient mm -hmm. for anti-aging yes. and like nourishment and seeing this like the internal as well to supplement, you know, like different deficiencies or like the flow of this is very cool. Yeah, and it's funny, there's a concept called the doctrine of signatures, which means how an herb looks points to its benefit. Oh. And so if you actually hold up the ginseng by the head, it kind of looks like a person with really long limbs. And that was like, how, yes, exactly. And that was actually how, like way back in the day, like over a thousand years ago, they discovered ginseng and its longevity benefit. That's like Chinese in a nutshell, right? <laughs> There's like so much deeper inner meaning behind just a surface mm -hmm. thing, which is like our skin. It's like, there's so much going on. Yeah. With <laughs> within exactly last question and i think a lot of people might be wondering how does alcohol affect our cycle it comes back to inflammation mm. alcohol and inflammation are so closely connected mm. and you know what's really interesting so i've been dabbling with cutting off alcohol um, and i say dabbling because i love wine <laughs> I love a nice glass of cab at the end of the day. Yeah. But what I've noticed, and especially as I've been wearing an aura and tracking my sleep and my heart rate, is that when I drink at night, especially if I only have like one or two glasses of wine, my heart rate when I go to sleep is actually elevated because my body is working hard to process that alcohol. Mm. And my heart rate variability, which is a measure of how our parasympathetic and our sympathetic nervous systems are communicating, like basically how well is our body managing stress. My HRV, which we want it to be high, that means we're doing a good job regulating stress, it's very low. Mm. So from tracking my sleep habits over the past year, I've actually seen the data for myself on the effect that alcohol is having. And I noticed that when I cut out alcohol or even reduce it to, you know, let's say like only two, two or three nights a week, it has a dramatic improvement on like my skin, mm. my cycle, my ability to sleep. And all of us probably need more sleep than we're currently getting. <laughs> yes. I think the hard part about tying all this together and getting people to understand is like, it comes up so differently for everyone. Everyone, yeah. And like in different phases of our life as well. Like yeah. I remember being able to process certain foods or drinks so much easier than like now. And I'm just like, oh, I feel like there's a rock in my stomach after having yeah. certain foods. So it's like almost understanding our cycles of life. It was like the seven year cycle. Yes, the seven year cycle for women. Women. Yep. Um, and so when you are going from like, you know, your late 20s to your like mid 30s, that is actually the cycle when you are starting to, you're starting to age and you're starting to maybe like lose a little bit of elasticity in the skin and your estrogen levels are like starting to drop a little bit more. And I don't think that's cause for concern, but it's just additional information on how it's more important for us to nourish ourselves. Yourself. Like I remember in my early 20s, I would like go out all night, like pull all nighters. I can't even think about doing that anymore. I and I don't want to, you know, I love sleep so much it's more. True. <laughs> yeah. No guys, boundaries. I yeah. have to be home and be in bed. Mm, okay. So guys, there's just so much we can do, but I think we just want you to know that there are options, right? Yeah. And it's really turning it into how do we read ourselves? How do yes. we dissect what our body is trying to tell us through our skin, through our mood? through things like sleeping or not being able to sleep and what we can do. So I think a really great place is, and I love that you created such an easy formula to just start off, see how your body responds and see if it like changes these micro changes. Yeah. Less about like, I'm gonna change my body the next day. I don't think it works like that. A little bit of adjusting stress habits or sleeping habits and then your eating and nutrition habits and all together, I can tell you it will change. So we do actually have a code for you guys because I really want you to try this out. I got the whole team to get on there, do the health assessment because I feel like every single person with a uterus has to do this. So if you use BW15, you will get 15% off the three month bundle, which sets you off on a three month journey of just like being able to learn about yourself. And it's so easy, you can like implement it 
into your morning routine? Your can you have it like at night or what's the suggestion? Yes, rule? yes. I love taking my cycle balance first thing in the morning, like with the lemon water. If you are sensitive to herbs or you've never tried them, then I recommend having it in tea, like with breakfast or something. And then the second dose you can use in place of your coffee as an afternoon pick me up or at night. There's really no wrong way to do it. We just encourage people to find what works for them. Highly recommend you guys try ginger aid. There's also, if you don't feel like well, there's a stay well. Yeah. Our immunity formula, which has the reishi medicinal mushroom in oh it. Oh my God, the star of the show, really. Look at this <laughs> mushroom, guys. I know we didn't get into talking about it, but this is like, Amazing. It looks like an elephant's ear or like a tree trunk. I don't yeah. know. Abstract art. Yeah, um, it's a beautiful adaptogen, an herb that helps the body adapt to stress, and it has great benefits on helping us with our stress response, our immune health. And for a lot of people, taking reishi helps them sleep because it calms and nourishes the mind. Yeah. Also, in a lot of skincare products for hydration. So if you guys have more questions, you can visit us at elixhealing.com. That's E L I X, and it's the words for elixir meets helix. This idea of an ancient healing remedy meets modern science personalized for you. You can take the free online health assessment at our website where you will be asked all about the different symptoms, diet, lifestyle, so you can learn more about your cycle and the herbs that are best to support you. And then we also have a blog on our website, The Wisdom, where we have different recipes and tips from nutritionists, acupuncturists, doctors. We're really trying to bring a holistic East meets West perspective to support people. Yeah, I love this so much. <laughs> okay, I promise last question. We always ask our yeah. guests on the show. What does beauty within mean to you? Oh, beauty within means that you wake up feeling at home in your body and you're able to live up to your potential and your dreams in this one very short sacred life. Yay! Thank you so much, Lily, for joining us. Thank you, Felicia. Guys, check it out. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, thumbs up. Share it with everyone in your life who you think needs to hear this, which is all oh, everyone. <laughs> um, and we'll see you very soon in the next episode. Bye!